All right, we have a couple operations. I think what I'm going to do next is drill these small holes, and then I'll drill the big hole, and um, we're going to we're going to just keep working through this thing. So I can use the drilling command on these holes that are uh, 101 in diameter. Uh, oh, sorry, they're sorry 201 in diameter. So I just picked a drilling command. I'll select my tool. I can go to the Fusion Library of Drills. And again, I'm going to just use a, I'm going to use a search filter to find uh, the appropriate size drill. Drilling command is pretty slick. We can select the, the material we're cutting. Um, and now we're actually getting into a unique scenario where we need to change the orientation. We actually need to um, tip the machine over to drill uh, these, these holes. So on the geometry tab where we pick what hole we want to drill, we're going to use tool orientation. And we can say the z-axis is going to come from up above now, and we're going to drill this hole. So we've got a nice drilling operation that pops through there. It stops at the bottom of the hole. A neat little trick on the heights tab. That's how far down the drill goes. We can say I want to drill through the bottom of that hole and go past by an eighth of an inch. There we go. One drilling operation done. Uh, same as last time in the modeling environment, I can repeat the tool path that I just did uh, by sliding up, or maybe I'll go ahead and come over here and just duplicate the tool path. So I have a second one. We can edit that and say for this hole, I don't want that face. I want uh, the Z axis now to be coming from over here. And this is now my hole as well as this one, and it's gonna poke the whole way through. So we've got two drilling tool paths, boom and boom. Let's do our uh, bigger hole on uh, here. Uh, a couple operations left and we're almost done. So another drilling tool path. Uh, this time we're going to use a 3 8 drill. A uh, little trick on this guy when um, when I'm setting my tool orientation, again, we want it to come from this other face. Uh, I also, when I'm picking my hole, it's going to start at the top of the hole, but my stock is actually higher up. I haven't bored this out yet. On the heights tab, we can go to the top of it. And instead of saying it's gonna start at the top of the hole, it's gonna start at the top of our model. And again, remember I talked about wanting to capture our intent, it's important to capture your intent as you're doing all these things so that you get um, a, a tool path that's going to update in the way that you want it to update if the part changes. So again, I'm poking through the bottom, starting at the top, and we have this drilling operation uh, over here. Okay, uh, we gotta bore this out, and we have to pick out that little bit of uh, geometry in here. So we will go ahead and do a boring operation. Uh, boring is just to clean out this hole. The geometry is going to be uh, from this same taller orientation. And we will just pick that hole. And I believe we already got our flat end mill. Yep, it was smart enough to know that the flat end mill is the last end mill we used. So we've now bored out this hole. We've got these other holes in. I need to cut uh, through this slot and, a, and we need to do our uh, slotting operation. We're getting real close. There's another trick I wanna show here now though because I wanna cut this out but I wanna come across the geometry that's um, been chopped off. That's what's helpful to our derive command. Uh, because we did a derive, I have access to the sketches that I use to model this part. And I can go ahead and show that sketch. And now I have some geometry that actually goes uh, right across there. So that's going to be very useful. I, I just created that uh, some visibility to it. We'll do a 2D contour again. Uh, in this case, I need a smaller end mill. So we'll go ahead and search for a smaller end mill. I can use my diameter filter I can search uh, 0.1875 and grab my uh, 16th end mill uh, to go ahead and pick this away. Now, when I'm cutting this away, it's going to select the geometry. This is going to be a neat little trick. It's coming from the correct direction. Yep. It's going to select it as a full loop, but I actually just need to start and stop at those two locations. If I select it a second time, 
I can say I wanted an open chain that stops here. So this gave me um, a contour that just starts and stops and doesn't use that whole sketch geometry. Neat little trick. Select the uh, selection a second time and it lets you change it. The depth is going down to the height I selected it at. So we want to go to the heights tab and we want that to go. Uh, let's do a selection and we want that to go down to here. And maybe I can even uh, grab that bottom plane and go a little further. Uh, personally, I'd like multiple depth cuts. So we can go to the passes tab where we set all that cutting information and say we're going to do that in multiple depths uh, with a maximum step down of maybe a quarter of an inch. Let's see what happens here. There we go. We got uh, two depth cuts uh, cutting that slot in. Very last thing we need to do uh, is our slitting operations and then we'll do a full machine simulation of this thing and we're we're good to go. We're going to use a contour operation again. Lots of contouring. Contouring is a very uh, common tool path for machining, just like extrude is a very common operation for um, modeling. So I'll do 2D contour. I'll select my tool. In this case, I don't actually have a tool in my library uh, that's going to represent this tool. So I'm going to show you how to create one. We'll create a new tool. Uh, I want to create a slot mill. For my slot mill, the diameter is going to be a, a nice large slot mill. The shaft diameter will be a, a little smaller. The overall length uh, can be tall. It's going to stick out of the holder quite a little bit. Um, and then uh, the flute length, though, that's going to be how thick this slot mill is. It's going to be a 32nd of an inch with no corner radius on it at all. So we're, we're now defining this tool. I want to put a holder on it so we can come over to the holder tab and uh, we're going to scan our library of existing holders and find one of these uh, existing holders to hang on to that tool. There we go. We've got our uh, slitting saw done. We want to tip over and, and cut this out uh, the, from the side. So again, we want to use tool orientation and set the Z axis uh, coming from that edge. For our geometry, uh, what are we going to cut along? We want to cut along this edge down in here. Uh, another little trick, if I hold Alt down, it's just going to get uh, that edge. And if I uh, do this neat little edit here, I can start off the edge and extend off the edge the other way. So that's going to make our tool path a little longer as well. You know how we could add multiple passes. We'll just do it in one pass to, to go for it. Uh, but really, I shouldn't do it in one pass. We should do it in multiple passes. So that, that cut that off there. Uh, let's cut this part off and get ourselves a machine simulation. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, duplicate this operation. I like to duplicate when I'm, when I'm recreating uh, things that are very similar. We can edit that tool path. Uh, we'll just delete the geometry away uh, and the tool orientation is going to be a little bit different. We're just going to make the tool orientation coming uh, straight up and down. The geometry we're going to cut along is this edge right here. We want this geometry to be, yeah, let's cut along right there. Hold Alt again to just get that edge. But I want to cut in from that edge. So here's another little trick. We can go to the Passes tab, say Stock to Leave. Usually you use this to leave extra stock. I need to go um, too far. So on the radius of the cutter, I want to go too far by, uh, let's go 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375. And it's driving along the bottom of the cutter, so I want to go down by the thickness of the cutter. There's a neat little way we can do that. We can actually just type flute length to a flute length and now it's going to extend down beyond by the thickness. So this should give us, oop, I came up by the thickness instead of down by the thickness. I'll double click to edit, go to my stock to leave and put a negative sign there. There we go. We've cut um, part way through the part. 
we will go ahead and make this happen on the other side. So instead of duplicating it, I can actually just use a pattern. Uh, the pattern, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna select this toolpath. I'll select a pattern. I'll select a circular pattern. Circular pattern it around that. And now I have a toolpath that comes from both sides and it's all captured in this little pattern uh, that's gonna chop off uh, the part. And because I didn't go in the whole way, it leaves a little web in the middle that can snap this thing out. Well, I hope I didn't go too fast. Um, I hope I went uh, slow enough that you can follow along, uh, at least in getting the concepts. Um, let's finish this off by doing a machine simulation of what this whole thing will look like. So we'll simulate it with a machine. Zoom out. Here we go. Let's play it. We faced our part off. We're contouring around our part. And we're gonna tip over and drill our holes. We're gonna come in and drill the big hole. And we're gonna cut that thing off. The very last thing we need to do is put code out to the machine so we can actually run it. To do that, we do this process that we call post-processing. In the post-processing step, uh, we simply give it a name. Uh, because I'm using a machine, it already knows the machine, it knows the settings for the machine. Uh, you would change those over here, but for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna uh, go ahead and output that uh, code. And here is the G code that runs the CNC machine. So start to finish, I um, guess we took about 45 minutes. If I was running through this uh, on my own, it'd probably take me not less than 10 or 15, but as we talk through it and what I'm thinking about, I, I hope this was helpful uh, for others and give you an overview of what CAD and CAM is. Cheers, thanks for following along.